Hey everybody, it's good to see you all again. This segment is just to kind of let you guys know what is going on in this episode. So in this episode, there is a situation um, towards the end or anywhere in this episode, there is a blank. That means there's no sound coming in the episode. And you might think that is your fault. That is my fault. You can blame me, say it was my fault because that is editing problem and that's because of recording and the recording platform that I use. If that happens to be in the in the episode, if that's in it, um, what you need to do is to just disregard it. Don't worry about it. Consider it like an ad break. Consider it like a break. Consider it like we're taking a five minute break. Consider it like that. So no freaking out. No need to worry. Make sure you guys enjoy the episode. Enjoy what's in it. And y'all have a good one. And enjoy this one. Really enjoy it and have fun. And please disregard the blanks in there because other than breaks. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. And thank you guys for understanding and for your cooperation. Hey guys, I am back here today with an ex-member of Engemanic Electronic Entertainment. This is Lano Productions. If you guys are from that record label, you might, might have known him. He did have his own text channel on Discord, so he's pretty well known. But um, anyways, he's here today solo. Um, I'm glad you're here, man. Uh, good to see you. Oh. Hey, what's up? It's glad to be here. Or I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad that you accepted. I'm a huge fan of your work. I've been listening to a couple of your stuff in the past, and it's been amazing so far. <laughs> yeah, I've only been really, like, producing for pretty close to not even a year yet, but, um, like, I've started pretty recently. But honestly, like, it brings me a lot of joy knowing other people enjoy what I do and is entertained by it. Yeah, of course. I mean... I mean, I mean, why else would I? Uh, why, why else would you be here? I mean, I love your music. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Good. I, I mean, it's it, it's awesome stuff for me. It's really surprising that I've been able to get to this point where I am asked to go onto a podcast. So I'm like super happy about this. Yeah, me too. And I'm sure everybody else is tuning in, getting excited. All right, um, to make sure this is not a weird place for any of us, we're going to just go on. Um, so I want to kind of get started um, with just a little backstory, because I know you've been looking forward to sharing this. Um, yep. So how did you get started as a producer? So how I started this to produce, actually uh, really weird. So back maybe a year, back a year, uh, back in like September or something, I was always a big fan of these uh, guys named um, Team Clutch, and they were such fucking great like rappers and shit, and they, they uh, made gay hip hop, and it, it sounded really good, and it was really funny too, hearing like the lyrics and shit, because a lot of it is so much more creative like i'm speaking truthfully like so much some of it is so much more creative than what you hear mainstream stuff like i'm being completely honest talking about dicks and shit they can make it so much more creative than talking about drugs and shit from mainstream but um beginning of the year i hit up their main member, Colossal Cox, and asked him if he wanted to make a song together. He accepted, which blew my mind. And we immediately got to work. He made a beat, and we started getting to work and shit. And halfway through it, I started to record my verses, and I was like, oh my fucking God, my voice sounds so awful on like a recording. Like I hate it, bro. So I was like, bro, I'm so sorry, but I don't think I can actually, like, make a song or anything. And yeah, and he was like, yeah, bro, it's all cool. Uh, we barely got started anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. So then 
I actually have always wanted to make like some kind of music, be it rapping, producing, or even being an uh, lyricist. And then I started being a gay hip hop lyricist, like writing lyrics for people. And that actually went really well for me for a little bit. I got a couple songs up there, but they're all gone, I think now, except a couple on some other people's channels. But I mean, I don't even think I would remember their channel name. So they're kind of long gone. But um, I did that for a little bit, got bored of it. And then I started, I got a laptop, I got Soundtrap and I was like, wow, this is so good and then i started fucking making beats and shit and joined the label in the beginning of the summer or ending of the summer kind of no it was more beginning of the summer and here i am now oh wow so i'm just taking uh, all this in i know this doesn't seem like i got much but i do got a lot I mean, I mean, you've only been doing it for a few months. You're already fantastic. And I can see why you would pick producing over a horrible voice. I mean, I totally get you. I yeah. would. Like, my talking voice is all right. Like, I'm comfortable with how I talk. It's just I don't like hearing myself on an actual, like, recording of some sort. And, like, I'm thinking about it, like, constantly trying to build confidence and shit which is what I'm trying to do right now. I'm just trying to get a flow down. So then hopefully when I actually like mature more and I say if I hit 16 or something, then I can start seeing if I can put some shit out. If I'm comfortable with how I sound, I'll start doing that. But I believe if you think you haven't made something good, you should really upload it. Like I personally didn't want to upload it because I didn't sound good. I wasn't going to upload something I wasn't proud of. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like my whole thing is making something I'm proud of and being able to show what I'm capable of. And me not being comfortable and not being proud of what I did, it made me just think of other ways I could actually do something and producing was the other way. And I didn't actually have to, you know, put my voice out there. Right, right. I totally get you. And you've been like, rocking as a producer. You've been rocking as a... Thank you. Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, I don't know why anyone would drop you. <laughs> it's, like, um, it's mainly because I you like couldn't sign anything. Well, hopefully you get to come back. Hopefully you get to. I mean, I don't think you're that far away from... 18, I don't think you're too far from that. Four more years, man. I got to reach four more years. Oh, four. Okay. Yeah, I'm only 14, so I can't really... You don't, it's... Sound, you don't sound 14. You sound 17. Nah, I'm only 14. Wow, you got a really deep and presentable voice for 14. <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. A lot of people from my school uh, say if I, like, try to deepen it a little bit more, I can sound like Swagger Souls, which is fucking awesome for me, I guess. It is. Because <laughs> you can also fool people. Exactly, I know. Like, I've had so many people, like, online that, I mean, real life, I'm, like, 6'1". I, I look a lot older than I am. It has a lot of perks to it. Oh my god, you're tall for 14. <laughs> yeah, man, there's a lot of perks to being, I guess, winning the genetic lottery like that. Yeah. You definitely beat genetics by a whole mile. Hey, but I'm, I mean, I got my dad's a little bit of receding hairline, so I got to keep my hair a little bit longer. But I mean, other than that, I'm set. Yeah, you said 100%. The tallness, deep voice, oh my god. <laughs> They're all gonna be all over you, just wait. Huh? They're all gonna be all over you. 
I'm not even into that really. Like I'm here to make something of myself personally. Like I'm just trying to build an actual career for myself and be able to set myself up for myself in the older, like older me. I'm thinking about older me. Like, yeah, it's awesome being able to live like right now, but right now I'm just thinking about how I'm going to be when I'm older. Mm. You're thinking ahead. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I, I try to think as best as possible because my dad and shit, like he's a, a, an awesome person, but the main thing he taught me is like communication skills and shit like that. So I'm good with my words and stuff, as some might say, I guess. Mm. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'm trying to say. But I like that you use your head. That's pretty smart. Get it? Smart head. Get it? Ah, I'm so funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> But seriously, back to this. Um, overall, as a producer, um, what, how would you describe your music? How do I describe my music? Typically, I don't create much sad stuff, but recently, artists that I've been uh, contacting, like a lot of stuff right now is actually in the making. Like I have a lot of different collabs that I'm actually working on. One of them be it some guy that sounds a lot like Kid Leroy. And then I have um, the final song for me and LJGS's album, Infinity. We're working on that right now. So we can drop it real soon. I mean, he is an absolute machine when it comes to that. With like rapping and being able to do that. Plus the dude works 84 hours last week. So he's insane. But typically, my music, a lot of it's more energetic, but I don't really make, um, I guess, I've noticed a lot of my music is a lot more different of um, other producers, I think. Like, I see a lot of producers using really longer synth pads and stuff, but I kind of stay away from that kind of stuff because I'm not too familiar with it. I stick with plucks and short kind of sounds like short guitar plucks um i mean i'll met i'll dabble with like piano chords and stuff like that but i i, I don't mess with synths much unless it's like plucks and stuff but normally a lot of it's a lot clearer sounding like i don't add a lot of effects to my stuff like i try to make it sound as natural as possible i guess i don't add too much stuff i try to leave as much room as possible for an artist that wants to go on to it to actually be able to fit their voice in. But I still got to work on that. And I know for a fact that I'm only in the beginning of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm, 100%. And I let you diverse yourself away from like the generic producers. That's really cool. Hmm. I mean, that's really the only way how you're ever going to get recognized because the chances of being one of those really generic producers and then being in like one of those other producers like me I have a lot of messages behind what I do like it may not be in my music but personally I have a lot of goals and a lot of things that I would like to put out there so with a lot of artists that I want to work with I actually collaborate with them with making the lyrics because as a uh, former gay hip-hop lyricist I still I don't know creatively i'm pretty fucking good i'm proud of my creativity when it comes to that kind of stuff so me being able to put something out there without actually having to put my voice out there just blows my mind it's so it's such a great thing yeah absolutely i'd be my mind would probably be blown as well thinking about that hmm. mine would definitely I love that you do things definitely as a producer and overall um, you've been successful. So that's really, that's really good. I mean, I try, I've been trying for a little while now, haven't gone too far, but I mean, getting immediately uh, hooked up with a label, not signed or anything, but just hooked up with them. Like 
I was part of them for a little bit, but nothing officially signed. But I mean, for doing that at, I mean, like three months of actually making beats and stuff, I, I'm proud. I'm proud of myself. Yeah, I'm very proud of them for picking you. I mean, that's 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 pretty nice. They're open to like everybody. They're kind of like they being open to everybody. Yeah, they're open to so many people. But personally, I think going forwards, like for a lot of stuff, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna at some point in the future, be it soon or a little bit more in the future, I might try to form a uh, group like a rap group or something so then we can actually like discuss what we want to put out there and maybe just have a lot of different type of artists uh upcoming artists people that are different you know what i mean not just the generic um mumble rappers stuff like that mm. just some people stuff that's not mainstream that's what i'm trying to get to mm. i could put you in a band that'd be so fun yeah I mean, if only you were a drummer. I know a band that needs a drummer. If only you would be a drummer, they, um, they're they looking for one, but huh. you're in a group, that'd be so exciting. Man, I'm trying. I'm, I'm just trying to build up and finish the collaborations I'm working on right now. So hopefully when I'm done with all that stuff and I'm completely by myself, I can put together a little bit of a plan of what kind of artists I want and go on from there and what kind of projects I'm thinking of doing. Because when I was in the label, <clears throat> I had this um, idea just came up right off the top of my head. Because normally I'm uh, on my PlayStation with one of my friends talking to them. And we just come up with some really wacky ideas from making a um, v- version of the minions. But all the minions are like, shredded and they're six foot three and if you don't have a banana in your hand you get scalped i don't know stuff like that to like some actual really good creative stuff like um we came up with this thing where it's kind of like an album and it's called um what's it called ragnarok yeah yeah yeah. and it's all about like super like at first it starts off happy and shit but it goes forth with, like, the idea of the Norse mythology, like, Ragnarok. Like, certain rappers would play certain roles. Uh, They would, like, rap as if they were that certain person. The producers could even get in there and act like, or play a role. Like, they actually made this happen. And then it would, like, slowly get darker and stuff until, like, the final song where it's, I don't know, just really, just has, like, some really dark choir or violins and stuff. And they're just going off with stuff and they're actually like i don't know that's that stuff is like really cool to me to think about that and i'm hoping i can do that sometime soon that is an absolute dream to me to make something like that yeah i can imagine hopefully that dream comes true only time will tell time will tell you're right absolutely but i know the group thing will definitely happen you're in like a perfect place to get people to join you're like mm. in the perfect platform. This is, you're like in the best place ever. Mm. I'm, I'm happy I'm put into like the situation I've been in. I'm really grateful for the places I am in right now. Yeah, I'm happy for you. Thank you. I mean, how old are you? Hmm. I'm going to, I'm a, I don't tell people my exact one, so I'll just let them. I, I'm going to surprise you along the way. But uh, just say that I'm under 30. Under 30. Um, I'm going to guess early 20s. I'm going to guess early 20s. But, I mean, still, if I haven't seen you much, very much, but from the time I've seen you, you've grown so much. And I'm like, wow, you've gotten so much attention from other like artists and stuff like I saw I just skimmed through some of your stuff and I saw some really great artists and I am really proud of like how you've been able to actually get a hold of them and be actually able to have them on the podcast like that shit's awesome to me I would love to be able to actually 
put together something interview people so hopefully in the future you actually get to build something awesome and you can start making money from this or if you do right now start making even more money and be able to have a living off of it oh <laughs> i take the podcast stands a side thing i would never do this for a living if anyone asked, uh, i would never i would never do this as like my whole <laughs> life kind of thing i still want to have education alongside all of this no, yeah i understand that i'm just like it, it'd be baffling to me if i was able to like put together something like that and be able to live off of that you can't really live off a show like this you gotta have education oh well, yeah i know that but, but i know a lot of people like, fuel their entire like life off of this kind of stuff you know what i mean yeah Absolutely. And uh, doing music as a life thing, if you like it, that's cool. And there's an on and off side about having music as like a life thing. Mm. That's a good and bad thing. No, yeah, I completely understand that. Yeah, dude, if you're really, if you're really into this, um, you've got something and something for you if you really are into this. Ow. What might that be? Well, firstly, I do appreciate you supporting, you know, the whole show. And I heard you mention that you want to create something like this, or at least you said that I should. But yeah. I can tell that you would love something like this. Ow. Oh, that shit hurts. Ow. Huh? Nothing. Um... <laughs> No, maybe one day you'll even co-host. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Aww. <laughs> but actually, that would be, like, so cool if you, if you did that. That would be cool. I am, now that you mention it like that, I am, I actually wouldn't object too much from that, to be honest. Really? <laughs> yeah. Being oh. able to interview people and ask them how, like, they became who they are while still being able to do stuff, that'd be awesome to me, to be honest. Well, today's your lucky day, then. <laughs> I have something for you. What might that be? Well, you want to make content like this? I'm looking for somebody to be aside me. Ecstasy and Jack. I don't know if you know them or not. Um, you probably don't, but um, they both haven't been here um, so much. You noticed. If you watch my show, you notice that they're not here as often as I am. Most of the time, it's just me. I run the entire show. Yeah. But you're energetic. I love this, Lana. I love this. Just so you know. You're presentable. You're nice. You're professional. I like it. I like this, and we got good chemistry. So, mm. and I know this seems weird to ask everybody um, on here, but who cares? Um, yeah. I was wondering if you would like to do this as, I don't know, an everyday thing, I guess. Um, I might not be able to do it like an everyday thing because I just started up with high school, but on and off, Absolutely. I would love to. Just, I'm, I'm just kidding. You're not going to do this an everyday thing. I was kidding about that. Like, every so yeah. often, um, like, yeah. like not, long, not like every day, but um, sometimes, like, Wednesday and another one would be Friday, and then another one would be Sunday, then another, like, um, yeah, like, kind of spread it out. Like Wednesdays the, for me are absolutely awesome, because my school day is shortened by an hour, so Wednesday, so anytime after say four o'clock maybe i'm mostly open unless i gotta watch like a two-year-old you got a two-year-old uh my i have a little sister yeah for my dad oh so cute is the cutest like being alive bro but she, her only saving thing is that she's cute other than that ooh, i don't know she is so <laughs> like evil bro she hurts my grandmother so much like not intentionally but she's like beat her up oh 
Well, that is evil. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to have this on. I'd love it. The only offside thing, though, is that sometimes it'll happen on Discord, so. No, yeah, that's all cool. Hopefully, um, because I'm not allowed to, uh, have Discord and shit on my phone. I don't know why. Um, but obviously I can try, like, through my laptop, my, uh, Discord is okay. It's definitely not the best. Maybe I can do it through my other laptop which most likely has better connection to like the internet and audio. But other than that, I should be fine. I, I can test out my laptop some more, but yeah, Discord would be fine. Zoom would be best though. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna be using both of those from time to time. Yeah. And I don't do it every day. Trust me, I don't do it every day. I, um, I do it every so often, you know, like, um, like what I said, Wednesday, or it'll be probably it, it's something like Wednesday, Thursday. Then the next one would be Saturday. But something yeah. like that. But yeah, that that sounds dope to me. I'd love to just come on here and talk with some awesome people. Oh really? So if yeah. anything was to happen tomorrow, if I asked you, you want to join me? You say yeah. Without a doubt. Oh, okay. I love talking to people. I love being able to make content that, like, entertains people. That's, like, my entire, like, I don't know. That's something that brings me joy is being able to entertain people. So being able to entertain people from just talking, sign me up. <laughs> that is such good news. Hold on. I'm just going to collect my thoughts. All right. I'm I'm going to go and get a drink cuz I am very thirsty. I will be right back. Uh okay. Yeah, uh go and get one. I'll just keep the audience intact. Okay guys. Um he is going to be back. Um so I'll just keep this going cuz I'm not going to have any empty spaces. I mean you know, to be honest, I would love to have Lana as a co-host. He'd be so exciting. Um, you guys know that Jack and Ecstasy isn't even here half the time. Come on. I mean, it, it'd be so exciting. I'm going to really consider that. Ow! Oh. And sorry if I'm saying ow. Um, just a lot of shit in my room. Um, I just stepped on the tack just now and it hurts. Oh, it hurts. All right, I'm back. Yay. Uh, so good news. Um, let's take this thing, thing a spin. Um, I want to I wanna try it out. How about you? Huh? Try, uh, let me rephrase it. Let's give this um, co-host thing, thing a try. Is that fine? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's just finish up the interview and then we can do that. Oh, cool then. That's awesome. And I'm sorry about this way, everybody. Um, what a beautiful moment we just had. And if you guys tune in more, you'll see Lana pretty much a lot now. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. He, could be, he could be like Jack and only be here for a few times, then he'll leave. Hopefully not, because my schedule right now is pretty empty after the time of uh, 5 o'clock. Before then, maybe not so much, but after 5, I'm pretty open. Oh, wow. Okay. That's going to be weird because you're not central time like me. Ah, uh, I'm one hour ahead of, ahead of you, I think, right? Or behind. Are you Eastern? Yeah, I'm Eastern. Oh, that means you're an hour behind me. That means when it's five at your place, it'll be four. That actually works because my hours don't even start until four. Oh, okay. 
That actually works out. Uh, I forgot that you were Eastern. That works out because my hours don't even start during the week until, until four Central. So that works. Yeah. That actually works out. All right. Uh, but back to, uh, back to this because I know I'm sorry for all the way. A beautiful moment just flourished. Um, and I'm going to make a Big announcement, um, so you might hear a ping on Discord about it. I'm like, <laughs> everybody know, I'm sorry, but I'm letting people know. About me being able to co-host sometimes? Hell yeah. So anything <laughs> so I have to make sure to go big with. True. I mean, True. And I mean, I've been needing a co-host for a little while, so you just made my day with that. This is even better than possible with stuff. What? I I try to be as kind and stuff as re and respectful as possible. So honestly, it's awesome. I'm I'm happy I can actually do something like this though. Yeah, of course. I mean, someone as passionate as you with uh, music, I'm open. Mm. I am open. But seriously, let's get back. Yeah. Now since you um are not host, you are a little bit curious about me. Everybody has questions about me. If you um if you should know in the past, people have asked me questions from um why don't you record music or um what when did you start this? Um so before I get into music, just for me and you to get better a little more is there anything inside that tiny brain of yours that you find curious about me or wanting to know about me before you are officially like on here because once you're on here like me and you work together all the time just kidding we're not on here all the time but most of the time um probably my first question would probably be how old you are Nine. i mean that's yeah, i'm under 30 I, I know. But um, I'll give you another hint. All right, all right, all right. It is less than 25, actually. Oh, okay. Phew. Um, hmm. 19. You are very close. That's a really, that's a really good guess. 18. Ooh, that's a really nice guess. Um, was I right? Am I getting closer? You're getting very close. 17. Ooh, that's great. Huh? I mean, that's great. Um, now, since you're becoming co-host, um, I can tell you, but I'm going to tell you only in Discord because I do not want people to know publicly, so I'm going to let All you right. know. Do not be surprised and promise me this, you won't tell anyone. Uh, sure. And I mean no one, not even your sister or your family at all. All right. Just to keep this going, I'll keep um, babbling until I send it, so... Right now, I am sending him my little secret. <coughs> Ouch. You okay? Uh, no, yeah, I'm fine. No, oh, geez, that was a really hard Holy thing. wow. Is your sister poisoning you with your water? I guess so, yeah. She spiked the water in my house. Oh, wow. How dare <laughs> you? You... you you, I don't even know her name at all. Mm. But, yep, surprise, that's my actual. Surprise. That's dope as shit. I thought you were, like, older. I, I was having a scared feeling in my body, like, oh, no, what if this guy's, like, older than 25? I was like, oh, thank goodness. Because then my parents are going to be like, what are, you, what are you doing talking to this co host with, with some dude that's, 39. What are, you, what are you doing? Oh, my God. oh. oh yeah, that <laughs> would be something. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? 
Because they're, like, super big about, like, exploitation and shit. And they're, like, warn me, don't do this, don't do that. And I'm, like, yes, I know. I'm not, I'm not that stupid. I might not think about a lot of things, but I'm not like that. Yeah, true. Very true. But all right, let's get this ball rolling. So is there anything? Um, it's okay if you want to. Um, I know this is music, but I want to make sure that oh, we get at least like a good sense before we start doing this as a regular thing. Huh. I don't know, really. I think a little bit of mystery might not, like, hurt at all. Okay. Yeah. Like, honestly, I don't mind not knowing, like, your real name or something. I'm not going to ask that. I, I mean, maybe, that. L- yeah, later down the line, I mean, I might be like, is your real name, by the way? It's like, something like that. But probably nothing right now. That works. I like it. I like yeah, it. It works. All right, now nobody's getting bored of fucking uh, bored of me talking like this. Let me get back. Um, so, how did your uh, uh, production me- uh, process start to making beats? Like, how does that whole thing begin? So, normally, if I'm doing something like, say, a, an artist requests a uh, beat or something, I'm working with some guy that wants a sad, um, slow kind of guitar with lo-fi drums. Normally, I would just skim, just look up uh, fucking through YouTube or something. Just look up sad guitar beats and then just skim through those and get a genuine, uh, gen. I can't even think of the word. I'm not even going to try to say it. I just get a good idea of what I'm trying to go for and think that's kind of what I'm going for. And then I would start, I wouldn't say beatboxing because I don't like the word beatboxing that much, but I'd just start uh, making a melody off of the top of my head and just verbalizing it. And then if it sounds good right there, I'll put it into my DAW and then run it through there. And then if it sounds good, I'll just EQ it a lot so it actually sounds good on mo- on different devices because I know my um, my laptop is whack. And it's not, and it doesn't pick up the same things as, like, I say, a phone would. But um, normally, I just EQ it so much to where it actually sounds good on everything. And then I build some drums off of it, normally by, say, beatboxing or something, and then try to build the drums off of that. And then add 808s where I think they fit, and then boom. Normally, that's how it works. Oh. I. I Honestly, I don't know any other creative processes like what they look like. So I'm curious myself to see how other people actually build. <coughs> oh. Cool, cool. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, pretty nice. Um, and it's working apparently because you're making dope uh, music. Yeah. I'm happy of it myself. I. I don't think anybody else really beatboxes to try and make melodies, but I mean, I guess. Cool. That's awesome. And I've interviewed a lot of producers, but not quite like yourself. Huh. Well, that's awesome. Okay, one of the time that I've interviewed quite a bit of producers across the show, um, I've done a lot, um, a lot of a few producers in the past. I know, uh, Steezy, um, I think was taught guitar by one of like the guys of Red Hot Chili Peppers or something. I don't remember who it was or even if it was that exact person, but I I heard something like that. One of those kind of rock and roll bands, I think. He was taught by one of them. Oh, wow. Some famous. Some famous dude. Yeah, I know that. Some old-timey, not even old-timey, um, fewer years kind of rock and roll type band. One of the lead guitarists, I think. Which, in my opinion, is phenomenal to be actually able to have that chance to meet with someone like that. 
oh. and learn from them. I haven't really had a model like that yet. I haven't really had a role model like that. Oh, so you don't have like a music role model like in your life, you don't have one of those? Like not one that I can normally talk to, but I look up to a lot of different uh, artists, like not really producers, but normally just a lot of artists, like uh, say Lil Nas X or something. I think he is amazing. Like his story is so like phenomenal to me from going out of Taco Bell out of a single song and winning that kind of lottery like that and absolutely turning his life around and being able to like make being a superstar yeah yeah oh he's a one-hit wonder he'll go away but now every single song of his is a banger it's fucking awesome that inspires me so much to actually create more yeah absolutely and then with this uh pride of being gay and shit that that's awesome to me to be able to like take that different approach and be able to actually stand out like that without caring too much and being able to show how much he doesn't care what people really have to say and the hip-hop normal norms I think that's phenomenal. I think that's really inspirational. The things he like, things he does, like personally. Ah, oh, I love that you look up to him. That's pretty cool. He's really dope as well. I like him. Hopefully, I can get him to be on here one day. What if I told you that he was gonna be here and we're gonna be like interviewing? When? Uh, how would you? I would go nuts personally. I, I would. Honestly, if that were to happen, I would go a little nuts, personally. Like, holy shit. These two weirdos right here get to interview fucking a hip-hop superstar. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay, then I probably won't tell you until like a week before, just to give you a week to prepare before you have to meet him. <laughs> but yeah, I look up to a lot of different people, be it um, another notable one is probably Dax. He puts a lot of uh, effort into uh, not necessarily being different. I mean, he certainly is different. But being able to show his pride for being a Christian and shit. And then also, his two Joker videos, I personally love. It talks a lot about cyberbullying and shit, which I'm super, like, interested in. Like, not, not personally, like, I'm into cyberbullying. But I'm just super against that kind of stuff. And to be able to see, I don't see much other work from people actually addressing those kinds of problems. So seeing that kind of, like, show... That's awesome to me, personally. Being able to actually have a message behind your music, like an actual good message and conveying it in a proper way, that's spectacular to me. I think that's what should really be leading the music industry right now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of that positive and uplifting, they should. And, and while well, the main problem is that there's not... Well, actually, there, there's some that doesn't and then some there's not. So it's happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, my whole thing is in mainstream, like, music, there's not enough diversity, personally. I think there's absolutely not enough diversity. Some people really like hyperpop music or something. I personally don't listen to it that much, but I think... Anything can be music, personally. If you fucking smack two ass cheeks together and call it music and you enjoy listening to that, boom. That's whatever. Personally, I don't listen to that, or I probably wouldn't listen to that, maybe. I mean, if it sounds really cool, sure, I might. But uh, if I don't understand people that, like, say this isn't music or something like that, which I, I look kind of look down upon. Like, what the shit? They like listening to that kind of stuff. You can't really say what they listen to isn't music just because you don't like it you know what i mean yeah i do absolutely and i'm gonna agree even though some people might hate me but i 
totally agree. And some artists are not diverse in their music, and that's why they're that's why they're failing because they're not diverse in themselves in different genres. And I, because of that, they're not really doing as well as they should. I completely agree. I I mean, I have this one friend. We are absolute like really good friends we've known each other for such a long time he's 15 he's out in cali now but we've gone to school together since maybe second grade he's always been a grade above me but i mean we used to talk to each other on the bus and shit and i didn't even know until recently that he actually wants to become a rapper and he sounds good but he just doesn't know really how to get it started so he kind of looks up to me which is mind-blowing to me since from going from me looking up to him to now him looking up to me for being a producer and he's looking to me to actually get him started with stuff. That shit's so like mind blowing to me personally, but I'm like pushing him and trying to like push, like keep a message behind what you're doing, say equality or something. Not many rappers talk about like equality and shit. Like I'm just trying to say like, be different. Be as different as possible. Be it your messages about cyberbullying or something. Be it the difficulty of being a certain person. The difficulty of, I don't know, some other struggle that isn't talked about a lot. Because I know a lot of uh, artists like to talk about these struggles of drug addiction, which is absolutely fine. I think being able to overcome an addiction like that is amazing. But overall, I don't see everybody gravitates to that, which I understand a lot of people struggle with that. But a lot of people also struggle with, say, hate, such as a lot of, say, Muslims or something get really discriminated, or be it LGBTQ+, plus, they get a lot of discrimination against them, which I don't think that's really cool. But, um, like, that's my own personal thoughts. But, I mean, a lot of people don't really talk about that that much. Like, they don't have that message behind their music. All they fucking talk about is, um, I put my penis in a woman, or I, I put my dick in a box and I call it Dropbox or something like that. Have some really uh, generic flow. They talk about generic shit. And they wonder, oh, why is my shit not actually taking off? Because, I mean, if you had that message behind your music, that community that you're defending is going to go towards your music. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You're speaking so much truth right now. Because, like, personally, I stand up for a lot of equality. I don't care who you are as long as you're not hurting somebody you're hurting you're not hurting the an animal or you're hurting the environment i th i think you're a cool dude everybody should get along with friends as long as you're not hurting someone purposely hurting an animal animal purposely or hurting the environment or environment i don't know why i said that's so weird <laughs> i think you're a cool dude do whatever you want it does not matter to me we, we could become best buds as long as you're not doing those three things I think you're cool. Do whatever you want. I, I don't have a problem with you no matter what you do. Just don't hurt people, an animal, or the environment, and you're fucking cool. I, like, that's my own personal beliefs. That's what I believe in. But, I mean, a lot of other people share different beliefs, and I'm cool with that. I'm not here to argue with somebody's beliefs as long as, you know, you're not hurting someone. But... Other than that, that's that's kind of what I stand up for is myself. That's cool. That's cool. And I understand that. And I support you 100% on that as well. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. You're going to be very fun. <laughs> Man, I, I, I'm looking forward to the future stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for future stuff from you. Future collabs, our new chemistry. Yeah. I'm excited for all of it. Same. Definitely same 100%. Um, and I'm glad your friend looks up to you. 
I'm glad. That's a very wonderful feeling. I've had people look up to me when uh, I also songwrite, so I also write songs. Um, and writers, when they talk to me, when they collab with me, they have said that they look up to me. To me, I almost cried um, when they told me that. I bowed my eyes. Um, literally, I did. And I know that sounds stupid, and fuck you if you say that um, otherwise, but honestly, that's a beautiful feeling. I mean, you shouldn't be taken lightly. Anyone that looks up to you, yeah. I mean, that's such a beautiful feeling to me. It's, it's such a beautiful Absolutely. Feeling. I completely agree. Having somebody look up to you or tell you that they look up to you, it, it's such an awesome feeling. Like, I wish I could be as popular, say, as some other mainstream artists and still have the humbleness I have now. And I know for a fact, because it's human nature, to become less humble as you get more popular but my whole like trying to do is trying to stay humble try to stay what i'm actually wanting to do because i mean i'm from a super small town from fucking massive two shits and Mm -hmm. that place is so boring there's nothing there what well i can see nothing literally the yeah The only good thing in my town and the funnest thing for an entire month during the summer was a ramp me and my friends built behind the school made out of the dirt from the dumpsters. Like it, not from like the dumpsters, but like the dirt construction people do. And we built a ramp out of that for our bike because there was a hill that went through the woods and there was a path. So we rode our bikes on that uh, hill and we, had such an awesome time like we built that up and eventually they took it down after like two weeks but that was the most fun our entire summer is that little ramp out of dirt oh my god you've got to be kidding me that's the only fun thing that's so small other than that like literally my old high school was merged with the middle school and there was a combined total of 150 kids. Oh, jeez. Damn. Yeah. Only a handful of actual, like, places you could go, I guess. Because oh. literally every person in that town I know is either a stoner or they vape or they do something else like that just to not be bored. Like, personally, I don't vape, smoke, or do any of that kind of stuff. I try to stay away from it because my dad, personally, has had history with that kind of stuff. So I try to stay away from it, personally, mainly because of my own morals and what I try to do. But I've had people offer me it, and I turn it down every time because I don't kind of want to get into that. It's I have money that I want to spend on other things, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I totally get it. And that's also kind of sad that you don't have a lot. I mean, I'm going to tell you something in reverse. Um, In reverse, because I live down here in Texas. I'm down here. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know that's (laughs) crazy, Um, but I'm down here. I live in Texas. I'm in H-Town, and, you know, yeah, because of COVID, there hasn't been a lot um, down here, but... Man, there has been so much. Um, <laughs> it, it's been a lot, um, especially now the people are not, try- not opening up. We got to go shopping, the mall, um, <laughs> barbecue place. Uh, I just went to Texas. Yeah. And it was so good. Um, and parks are open. Um, bowling alleys are open. Uh, sports centers are open. And um, we have a brand new stadium built in um, around where I live, so it's going to be really exciting. That's so, awesome. I'm, I'm happy for that kind of stuff. I mean, I moved to a different, like, state entirely, also because there was nothing to do in my old state. Like, I'm, you know, in the next place over, but, I mean, it's so much better here. Granted, a lot of the town is fucking coke fiends, but overall – a lot of people are awesome. That'd be really cool. And yeah. I have, and now you speak about it, an idea has been coming to me for actually a very long time. It has actually came to me. 
and I might actually do it in the future. Um, a lot, of, all my friends, they live. Um, well, only a few of them live down here, but a lot of them live like upward, in the middle. Um, I just had this crazy idea. I had a dream once about it where I got to see them for the first time um, in real life, and mm. we did a road trip. And after the dream, I was like. You know, I wish that could actually happen. Yeah. I mean, like, honestly, I could get along with all my friends and be able to actually, like, all my interstate friends from, like, different places say, I have a handful of friends down in Nebraska. The fucking corn huskers they are. They're awesome people. Best friends. And I, I wish we could see each other. So hopefully sometime in the future when we uh i get my license and shit because i get my permit next year which is awesome to me but maybe some time we could actually meet up and actually like hang out for like a week or something during the summer which is so me yeah i'm actually down for that i'm actually down to do that um hopefully once i get older i can start going on airplanes um yeah and I want to actually try and visit my friends that are in the UK because I got a lot of friends that live in the UK. So I want yeah. to try and go there. Mm. And I don't know about you, but I want to meet immortal being in Canada. I want to, I want to go to Canada. That's, that's another place I'm going. I'm going to Canada. I'd want to live in Canada, to be honest. Yeah, I'm going to Canada. I want to actually, because they have poutine, and I've always wanted to know what it tastes like. Um, it looks like fries, like, dipped in chocolate, which yeah. I'm actually pretty fine with eating. Mm. Which I'm actually really fine with. But yeah, that would be really exciting, and I want to actually kind of see, like, how you are, because I'm actually about right where you are in height-wise. I'm not going to tell you, like, how big. How tall? Yeah. But I'm right around there. I'm so, guessing 5'10". Yeah, I'm around there. Let's I'm guessing I got around. it right. I'm around there. <laughs> you said you were 6'2". Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um... And I'm loving this. Um... Um... Honestly, thank you um, just for this time. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, I just want to tell you deeply from my heart because um, I hit people. I honestly do. I don't sugarcoat shit. Like, I don't just yeah. make things look fine. Like, I tell you honestly that meeting you um, has been very nice for me. In Personally, Texas, bro. Right now, we're dealing with the tropical storm, Nicholas, and I've been <laughs> stuck here. I mean, I, I yeah. like I like being stuck, but um, I like I like being at home. Mm. But this is like truly made my day. Honestly, I mean, it's really late in, in the evening, but yeah, it, it yeah. just made my day. Honestly, um, same here, bro. You're you're an awesome dude. I'm just, like astounded. I can actually be on some more shows with you. Yeah, and you, like, got me tearing up uh, when you asked me, uh, well, you sort of asked me if you want to do this more. You sort of did. Yeah. Um, and that made me, like, overjoyed, honestly. Um, <laughs> and I can't show you my camera because I am not ready for a face reveal yet. Um, Just yet. But you do, like, an H2O Delirious face reveal to your fucking g <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, all right, what does this guy look like? Oh. All right. Wrap it up uh, musically. Face reveal. All right, here we go. And. Oh. It's a GTA 5 character. <laughs> it's going to be audio, so they can't even see my face anyway. So, ha! Yeah. They can't see my face anyway. Yeah. But, um, honestly, when you told me that, when you asked me that, it's like my eyes started bulging out because I started like crying. I know I didn't sound like I was crying, but when you were, um, when you gave me a drink, I was like overjoyed, honestly, because I don't know. I could hear you from upstairs talking to someone or yourself. Yeah, honestly, yeah. And 
it just sometimes gets lonely when it's just me um, with someone else because I got no one else here to help me. And honestly, that's true. I don't have anyone else besides me that helps me. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, I got supporters. Um, I got uh, down to D and D. He's the one that um, downloads some of the things for me. Like I appreciate him. Yeah. I appreciate him. I appreciate you all for supporting me. But behind the scenes, though, um, I just want to clarify. Who, um, if you guys helped me in the past, I appreciate it. Behind the scenes, though, behind the podcast, um, not a lot of people help me. Jack and Jack and Ecstasy has not been here for me. They don't. They're never here. I text them sometimes, but they don't answer back. And that sometimes makes me sad. That sometimes makes me kind of sad. Um, that I got to do that. I mean, I'm sorry to make you um, like that. Um, no, yeah, bro. That's, that's fine. Like, honestly, I'd... As long as I have an interest for this kind of stuff, which I've had an interest for it for a long time. So being able to do something like this brings me a lot of like joyous and I can actually do something else to entertain people, you know, shit's awesome to me. Yeah, of course. And you also might want to, um, you might want to do this, um, regularly because, um, what else are you supposed to do besides school in Massachusetts? Right. You, you don't I don't. Have, I don't have school in Massachusetts no more. I uh, am in a different state. Oh, where are you exactly? Um, Vermont, big old maple syrup town. Vermont. Yep. That explains why you're boring. They don't have a long Vermont. I don't hear anything about it. There's nothing there. Almost nothing. Well, Mass- Massachusetts was boring. Vermont is a lot better. Oh. Yeah. Oh, damn. Now you're confusing me with the two. <laughs> now you got my head spinning with the two. Massachusetts is big old pride of the USA, I guess you could say. We hate British people. We uh, fuck tea. We hate it. Absolutely hate tea. Any people that drink tea, we fucking smack it out of their hands and throw it in the pond. Oh. Don't touch in the tea. Yeah. I- I've seen people do that a lot. Mainly as like slander and shit but i mean i've like seen some old people like heavily slandering like british people like personally i'm not like that but i have seen a lot of older people just like cracked out of their fucking mind it's like oh i fucking hate british people fuck their tea i hate it oh damn that was racist as fuck that's so racist (laughs) i don't understand racist people that all that much personally they're the ones that exclude people and they're rude and disrespectful. They're all over the world. It's so sickening. Um, it's so sickening. Mm. Like, I'm fine. Cool. Uh, fucking, you don't like Asian people. Whatever, whatever. I can't change your mind about that. But as long as you don't go out like spreading hate speech or something, you're being like, oh, I hate Asian people or something like that, just don't do that. Or go out and, like, harass them or tell them, oh, kill yourself or something like that. Just don't do that. And I can't change your mind. Like, personally, I don't think... I I think the way that that kind of people think about that kind of stuff is fucked up, but, I mean, I can't change your mind, but as long as you don't, like, go out and spread hate speech, I'm fine. (laughs) I respect that. I like, uh, I respect that 100%. Yeah, like, I'm not going to go harass some racist dude. Like, fuck's that going to do? Just make them angry or be like, ah, oh, <laughs> now they got their little buddies after me. Oh, now one now of the Asian people got up their sleeves. Stuff like that. I mean, it's just going to make them not like them even more. Like, mm-hmm. personally. I mean, whatever, man. Believe what you want to believe as long as you don't hurt people. And treat others like prejudicely. Yep, I'm with you 100. percent But um, I just wanted to just kind of um, spread that, at least to just give you a little thing about where I'm coming from. Um, I'm not all absolutely. 
Absolutely. Ow. Um, but on the happy side, um, I'm very happy that you came. I'm so excited for our future. Um, I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> lots um, coming up. So I was awesome. You, um, but I've got lots of, um, for me and you in the future. I got a lot of things mm -hmm. planned, um, lots of events happening. So if you got, if you had any plans or any sports you were doing in Vermont, you might nope. want to stop those. I, I got no sports I'm doing. I mean, I used to play basketball, but I mean, I, I just kind of lost interest in it personally. I mean, plus I want to be having to deal with some people who have been playing football all their lives. And I fucking saw some dude at my school that had tree trunks. I'm like, fuck no, I'm not signing up to get my like shit pushed in by someone like that. No fucking way. I'm not going to like go after that kind of person. No way. You're right, you're right, 100 um, percent Now, this is the time this is the time I like to give you because actually no, I forgot to ask this. I forgot. Um, it's actually two things I forgot. Um my brain has been so loose. Um what can you tell us about any new projects you are um uh, in the making? What can you tell us about um any new projects, anything um that your fans can look forward to from you? Uh the main thing right now is finishing up the album i'm working on with ljgs we are so close if i count up the songs right now like one of the songs for the uh little show at the end one of those songs is actually in the album so i'm just giving a sneak peek to that but um we have one two three four five six songs done right now and i think the seventh is where we're going to end at. And I'm actually looking for a collab on that, like an actual good collaboration. Cause one of the songs we got uh light of destiny, AKA LOD. And he is such a great rapper. Like overall he is wonders on the mic and only being 16 from like Southern USA. He is fucking awesome. Like personally, like it was such a joy being able to hear him on something I created. And then L L uh, LJGS, such a great rapper. I mean, he puts so much work in. Recently, he hasn't been doing all that much, but that's because, I mean, he's been working nights and days. He worked like 85-something hours last week alone, but he is an absolute, like, awesome person to be able to work with. He does stuff super fast. He actually gets stuff done. Like, overall, I, got, I have a lot of respect for him. That is awesome. He must be a good person. That's good people. He's absolutely a good person. Oh, and if you're looking for features, I got, I got you. I got lots Def of connections. Definitely hit me up. Because uh, if you want, I could send you what we have right now for our last song. And I could send you it and then see if you could send me uh, some features over my way and then hopefully that work. Oh yeah, that, that could definitely work. I'm loving it. Um, mm. I did put something, that's the official Discord server. Um, yep, I just joined. I wanted to let you, oh, let me, let me fix this by the way. That's so everybody knows. There we go. I should change that. I'm gonna fix that later on. But yeah, uh, send that my way, and you're in a perfect server, because um, there's lots of cool people in it. Um, so online, I recommend Akilo, Ellie Cario, Nami, um, Reggie, Music Thunder, um, Lee Wrights, um, E List. Of course, a model being you should hit up because they're awesome. No, yeah, they're they're awesome people. Like, I don't personally. Aaron, he's pretty all right at rapping. Like personally, I I don't I wouldn't listen to it personally. Like I'm putting that word out there a lot because I have a lot of respect for him. He puts a lot of work in, obviously, 
But I really enjoy Liam, which is the other member of Immortal Being. He is an absolutely, an absolute wonder to talk to. Super respectful dude. Awesome rapping. He he's great lyricism as well. Cause Aaron is an awesome lyricist. And then them two working together, it's so awesome, like seeing them actually be able to make something together with Aaron's lyricism and um Liam's flow, they work together so well. Ooh. Like I have a lot of respect for what they do. That's awesome. I like Liam too. He's really nice. He's really yeah. nice. I, I talk to him most of the time. I don't really talk to the other duo because he's, he's he's not online half the time. So I just talk to Liam because he's awesome. And he's very yeah. active too. I like him. Mm. Well, Aaron, Aaron is the uh the actual person that's active a lot. Liam is the other guy that can like rap really good with their flow. Uh, like I think I think you got them mixed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause Liam's the one with the red um logo and he's the one that's very active. No, Aaron, that's Aaron. It is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liam's the one that's not on very much. He has the pink one, I think. Oh dear, I messed up. I'm sorry, Mortal Being. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't hate me. I'm just kidding. They're, no, they're, they don't hate yeah, me. yeah. Overall, I have a lot of respect for them. They're great people. I mean, Liam, I've I look up to a lot. He's a super great dude. His flow is something else. Like overall, I look up to him a lot. But um other than that, they're they're working stuff out pretty well. They're doing their best. They're doing what they can. Mm-hmm. Yep, 100%. 100. But, yep, I'm so excited for your new projects. Um, hey, mm, oh, now I'm, that question's out of my head now. I lost it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um... Oh, now remember, um, everybody will get a chance to listen to your showcase. I know we didn't touch about that a lot, but I'm going to say it now. Um, what do you, what can you tell us about your showcase later? My showcase later? Uh, so the first one is called Whatever It Takes, and it's uh, wrapped out by um, LJGS. It's one of the songs of our album, and it's an absolute wonder to listen to. The second one, Cloudy Dreams, produced by me is an EDM track that, I mean, personally, it gives me a lot of like a Roblox lobby tycoon kind of vibes. Like it sounds a lot like that. And I love it for that. It gives me a warm feeling. I'm going to stall you personally, but a lot of work went into both those producing. And then the one where LJGS is rapping over it. He put a lot of work into that also with lyricism, but they're two of some of my best work. It's some of my best work that I've actually made personally. That I would say. Nice, nice. That's good to hear. Um, cannot wait. Everybody will get a chance with your showcase. Um, we're so excited. Um, now, um, I know that we've been here a little while. Um, so, is there any last thing things you'd like to say to? <laughs> Uh, the audience before we head off. Um, mainly just to keep in check with uh, what me and you are doing. Like, hopefully, we have a lot of projects coming up. We have a mm-hmm. uh, LOD as a feature, and then maybe someone else if I can find someone else. Oh, yeah, you're going to find someone else. And that server makes you hit up people. That's a great... The, some, the, name, the ones I listed, they're really good. I'll make sure to hit them up, though. Yeah, please do. They're really good. And if they agree to it, then you just found yourself a feature. True. Oh, another person is Conzi. He's, he doesn't show online, but he is online. He's another good one. Hmm. Well, I'll make sure to check them out, though. Thanks for the recommendations. Yeah, of course. You're my co-host. I got you 100%. <sighs> but um, 
Yeah, it, it was an absolute joy being here. I loved it. And I loved you being on here. Um, everybody, my new other co-host, um, Alana, a warm welcome from me and everybody else. Um, check out Lana. Um, I put links down below. Um, I also followed your Instagram because cool. we're, they, we're yeah. together now. Um, so y'all make sure to check out Lano um, down below. Enjoy his showcase later. Um, as always, make sure to follow us and support us on social media, all on Black Panther Podcast. Uh, we update there pretty much all the time, every day. Um, so you'll be seeing lots of posts there. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. Um, <laughs> no, it did not feel like the regular kind of um, way of interviews, but eh, whatever. It is going to be what's going to be. Um, but I hope you guys still overall had a great time. Um, and be prepared. Me and Lana, we're going to go, to, we're going to go at it together. Um, so you're going to be seeing him. So if you don't like his voice, you might want to change your mind because you'll be seeing lots more of him now. So <laughs> I think it used to it. Mm. Not in a weird way, though, like in a nice way. Yeah. But yeah, it was such a pleasure to get to meet you, and I cannot wait for more things with you. And it was an absolute pleasure meeting you, too. You're an absolute joy to talk to. No, you guys hear that? He's had a joy to talk to. Isn't he so sweet? I don't know why his, I don't know, I don't know how he can be so related to a evil little sister that is so iconic <laughs> she is a very very rude two-year-old I, I don't even think she's two yet i'm not even sure if she's actually two yet i think i'm pretty sure she is Ugh, i'm nervous to see what tens gonna look like Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. i can't even imagine what what 10 or 13's gonna look, oh god. 13's oh my god. 13's is, ooh. Talking about terrible twos, terrible 13's, bro. I'm gonna worry about that. What am I, 14? She's two. I'm gonna be 12 years older than she. I'm gonna be 25 when she's 13. Okay, thank god I, I get to move out. I'm so glad you're much older. Imagine me in a household of that. Oh. Oh, my goodness. That is, that would, I mean, hopefully she changes. I mean, I was a fat baby, but now I'm skinny as shit. Like, I'm not, like, super skinny, but, I mean, I don't have. Their Aidens and all of them are so cringy. I went I went through my incel slash cringy ass phase where I thought like Hitler equals funny, uh racism equals funny. I used to think that when I was like 12, 13, and then I grew out of that immediately. Some people are still going through that phase. I'm just hoping they get out of it soon, but I feel like every person named Aiden has to go through one of those phases, no matter who you are. I'm happy I'm out of it. Yeah, I'm glad was, you are. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wasn't actually, like, racist or anything, but I just thought, I just had a dark sense of humor, and I just had a fucked up way of thinking. Like, damn. I don't know. I, I don't know what I was going to say, actually. But, like, I, I was never to the point of, like, I know a lot of other people are, like, black people. Why is nobody laughing? I know a lot of people like that in my school, and I try to stay away from them as much as possible. They're, like, so annoying to talk to, and they look like they haven't showered in, like, months, bro. Oh! Yeah, like, me, I, I have naturally greasy hair. Like, it's not, like, greasy, but it's just fucking shiny, so it looks greasy. But I fucking shower every day to try to make my hair look is not like that is possible. 
because I, I don't like relating myself to other Aidens. Ugh. Oh my god. I'm out of my face, Aiden. I'm now Aidan. Yeah, I'm now Aidan. I'm no longer Aiden. Aidan? Okay, Aidan. Okay. <laughs> I mean, oh. I don't, like, call myself that, but I'm just, like, saying, like, I'm no longer related to other people named Aiden. I can actually have, like, freedom of who I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I like it. I like it. I like it. But, um, got a little tip. Absolutely. <laughs> to you. But, uh, yeah. If you guys like his jokes now, imagine what time's going to go on. That's going to be really exciting. It's gonna be really fun. Um. Anyway, check us out on social media. I mean, they, they weren't even really jokes. They're just actual truths. Right. <laughs> That's why yeah. I I think one person. I mean, there's actually people like that. I just think it's fucking funny to think that there are people actually like that. Insane. So insane. But yeah, um, to close it off a bit, um, thank you. Um, check out Mana social media um, and check out his music. Check us out on social media. These are reminders. You better listen. Um, and, and get used to Lana, by the way. You'll be seeing him a lot now, so get used to it. Anywho, have a great rest of y'all's night or day. I still hate time zones and I will continue to hate them. Ow. And I know it hasn't been normal, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Hello, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight as we dove into a wonderful podcast episode. Now, in this following segment, you will get a chance to hear this artist's showcase because every artist that comes on the show requires to do a showcase. So buckle up, get some popcorn, and enjoy the showcase. I hope you guys love it and check out the artist when you get a chance to. Hope you guys love it. Enjoy. I got over the initial shrug.
Whatever it takes, whenever it shakes A clever intake, but never be fake We set for the stakes, however we make Forever create, whether it's fate The weather is late, sharp enough to make a mark Roughly upon a fate, but we're hardly strong enough To hold what's a stake, just cruising on the lake Confused, so let's relate, and used to what we say What we gonna do today, how I feel is gonna be Waiting for another day, knowing it's paved the way Throwing all the pain away, finding out we gonna pay Showing up and just to stay if you just adjust your rhyme and use a different way to fry Me, myself and I, I can see it is connected to the spine It's making me come to realize we got a supply to make an uprise Without making them too surprised A sign on the wall posting to fly We are always trying not to die when we should be trying to live life Whatever it takes, whenever it shakes A clever intake, but never be fake We set for the stakes, however we make Forever create, whether it's fate, the weather is late Sharp enough to make a mark, roughly upon a fate But we're hardly strong enough to hold what's at stake Just cruising on the lake, confused so let's relate And used to what we say Waiting for another day, man, it's paved the way Throwing all the pain away, showing up and just to stay Finding out we're gonna pay, growing to a labor lay Owing all of it today, what they're gonna do today How I feel is gonna be Yeah, we just got the recognition But the superstitions are running wilder than a mission Without hesitation, I can't Catch all the fishes while you're listening to critics and wishing you're gonna make it Got their tunnel vision, making an incision Undoubtedly, it's a vicious and maliciously Called to the mild vision, a legion in your brain is washed and provoked Must be joked, cause when you always lie, it's revoked On the contrast of hope, sliding down as we cope